Hi, my name's Millie, I'm 15 and I'm on a mission to mend my relationship with food and exercise. I'd like to start off this video by saying that the topics I'm going to bring up may be sensitive to some of you. Before you exercise, please consider if it's medically safe for you to do so and if it will be a positive thing for you to do at this point. I am in a place now in my recovery where it's not only medically safe for me to exercise, but mentally beneficial as well. If you are still in a place where you aren't exercising and not yet considering beginning your journey back into the world of exercise, maybe think about watching another video that will better aid you in your recovery at this time. This video is more aimed at those who are on a journey to mend their relationship with exercise and I don't want you to feel like you should be exercising if you're not yet in that place. After being diagnosed with anorexia, I spent a long time away from exercise and that is what I needed both mentally and physically. When I say the word exercise, what do you think of? Running? Going to the gym maybe? For a lot of people, this isn't enjoyable. Exercise becomes a chore, something they have to do. It's forced upon them, but I think that what the same people don't realise is that hellish doesn't equal better. Forcing yourself to go on a run every morning despite absolutely hating it doesn't make you better than the people that choose to move their body in a way that feels good for them. And that is what exercise should be about moving your body in a way that feels good. Exercise shouldn't be a punishment. Exercise should be a way to learn to love and appreciate your body and all it can do for you. I'm so fed up of exercising only ever being about change. Improve this feature, lose this feature, change this feature. Exercise shouldn't be about subtracting things from your life. It should be about adding. It should give you confidence, give you energy, give you joy, give you a passion and a new appreciation for your body. If the form of exercise you're currently using doesn't provide that for you, maybe you need to take a step back and think about why you're doing it. During my eating disorder, exercise became simply a way to burn calories, to compensate for what I ate. It was something I had to do, something I felt guilty about skipping. And I think that unfortunately for a lot of people, this is the same. We have been conditioned by society to think that exercise equals weight loss, exercise equals calories out, and exercise equals fit, exercise equals healthy. And so, by the same logic, the more you exercise, the better, fitter, healthier you must get, right? But what you're forgetting is exercise isn't calories. Exercise is fun and joy and enthusiasm and passion and friendship and community and learning and loving and enjoyment. It's about realising that your body is capable of amazing things. Climbing a mountain and realising that your legs carried you all that way. Going for a bike ride with your best friend and chatting the whole way. Joining a dance class and finding a whole community of people with the same interest as you. Exercise should be about trying new things and realising that high jump definitely isn't for you, but that gliding through the water like a fish makes you feel amazing. For me, exercising was a big part of my life long before I developed an eating disorder. It was truly a passion of mine. However, my eating disorder sucked all the joy and enthusiasm I found in moving my body and turned it into a form of self-harm. It's a very common misconception that cutting is the only form of self-harm. In reality, self-harm is any way in which you inflict mental or physical harm upon yourself. For example, this could be translated into an eating disorder, substance abuse or exercise addiction, as well as the more well-known forms of self-harming. What you may notice about these examples I just listed is that they are all coping mechanisms. A lot of the time, self-harming tendencies go a lot deeper than they appear, which is why, however much you work out, if you haven't dealt with the actual issue, you aren't going to feel any better. If you don't love yourself right now, changing what your body looks like isn't going to help. Instead of putting all your time and energy into that coping mechanism you've become dependent on, why not redirect it into solving the real problem? My big dates are literally perfect today. You have to see them. Just appreciate this. They've never come out that pretty. Oh my god, I'm so happy. Hello. I've eaten like an entire pint of grapes just today. Red grapes are the elite grapes. Don't try and tell me otherwise. Oh, I'm trying to suck it in. Oh well, it's only a little bit fluffy. Uh, that wasn't even a nice grape. What a disappointment. Oh, oh 
no, where's it gone? Ah. Unfortunately, using exercise in this way, to change yourself, to lose weight, to somehow be the magic cure to the self-hatred we have, seems to be actively encouraged in our society. Which is why I think this coping mechanism of excessive exercise is something I've relapsed back into so many times. Because I literally didn't know what a positive and healthy relationship with exercise looked like. I didn't know how to exercise if it wasn't to change my body aesthetically, or make myself feel better about eating that cake earlier. Looking back now, I see so many red flags things that should have rang alarm bells, but things that were deemed normal. I think this problem goes so much deeper. The things I'm learning now about how to have a healthy relationship with exercise and food are things that I should have been taught 10 years ago. I went to stay on my grandparents the other day, who told me that my little cousin kept going to the pantry to get food, even though she was told that she wasn't allowed to because she hadn't done any exercise that day. It makes me so sad to think that this wonderful little girl is going to grow up to believe that she has to earn her food with exercise. She is being told by her parents at the age of nine that she isn't allowed food. This is not okay. It teaches people not to listen to their hunger signals and to see exercise as a chore you have to complete in order to deserve to eat. That is so good. It's been way too long since I've had biscuit. Mmm. -hmm. Adding an egg to my baked oats has been revolutionary. It keeps you so much more full. The texture is just amazing. It cooks better. It looks nicer. And you know, protein. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't already, just literally chuck an egg into your baked oats recipe. Don't change anything else. Just plop an egg in and it just makes it 10 times better. Mwah. Perfection. They cook so much faster now as well. That's the other thing I've noticed. Biscoff is just amazing. If you don't have Biscoff in your country, please like let me know or something so I can send you some because I don't know how you can go the rest of your life without any Biscoff. It's not fair, it should be illegal to go without Biscoff. I mean, not Biscoff, Biscoff should not be illegal. I am here to tell you now that you deserve food. Listening to your hunger signals is an act of kindness towards yourself that is so often overlooked. Self-care isn't just bubble baths and face masks. Self-care is allowing yourself to eat freely, allowing yourself to skip a workout. Listen to your body, because it knows you better than anyone. There are many reasons why you should not exercise, reasons that people would deem laziness, when in reality it's not lazy to not exercise because you feel tired, or you don't want to, or you're injured, or you don't have the time today. It's not lazy to put yourself and your mental well-being first. No. <laughs> Look at that scary dog. Scary. Oh, no. Mm. I'd like to share with you some of the ways I've made exercising enjoyable. For me, now, when I first wake up in the morning, the thought of doing my yoga gets me out of bed. I genuinely love it. It feels amazing taking the time to myself in the morning. I follow the most amazing guided yoga sessions that wake me up and make me thankful for my body. Do things that make you fall in love with your body, as it is now, not things that will make you fall in love with it once your body has changed to fit a beauty standard which will literally change again in a few years anyway. I'm very lucky to have a space like this in my garden I can use to do yoga. For me, being outdoors is one of the best things I can do for my mental health. In fact, studies show that spending time in nature has been found to help with mental health problems, including anxiety and depression, both of which are things I suffer from. For example, research into ecotherapy, a type of formal treatment which involves doing activities outside in nature, has shown it can help with mild to moderate depression. Another thing that has helped me with my self-love journey is wearing clothes that make me feel good. So, I would like to say thank you to Yvette Sports for sponsoring this video. I genuinely love this brand so much. What I love is how inclusive they are. Their sports bras range in size from an extra small to a 5 extra large in cup size A to F. Yvette's motto is to be active, be daring, and be inspired. They're affordable, high quality, and as you can tell, look great. 
It's their aim to help women in different age groups and body types to be active. It's not often that you come across an activewear brand that is focused on empowering women by making them feel amazing in their current body, rather than through encouraging change. You can check out their website or Instagram for size guides. I have some discount codes for you guys linked in the description below if you want to check them out. This is the Powerback Sports Bra. All of their sports bras are designed for high impact sports, which means it keeps everything in place. The crisscross straps can be adjusted and they cushion the shoulders really nicely. You can customise your fit with band adjustable hooks and they range in sizes extra small to five extra large and you can get it in seven different colours. These leggings come in three different colours, they're high waisted and they're adjustable at the waist. It ranges in size from extra small to two extra large and the soft fabric and streamlined shape. It's got four way stretchy technology and ensures an all direction stretch in all movements which means that it's just perfect for when I'm doing my yoga. It isn't at all restrictive. limitless mesh plunge sports bra which again is designed for high impact sports. The shoulder straps are adjustable and the mesh panels on the front keep you cool and dry during workout. It's adjustable at the back, it ranges in size small to extra large and is two colours. These are my personal favourite leggings. These leggings are made from recycled fabrics. They're 75% polyester which have been recycled and 25% elastane. They're designed for high impact workouts and they're breathable and it's got a wide waistband so it's super comfortable. It ranges from size extra small to extra large and there are four different colours. This sports bra is definitely my favourite. It's the Sculpt Ultra Cool and has a unique crisscross and hollow out design on the front. The racer back design has crisscross straps that firmly hold you in place and it ranges in size small too extra large and you can get it in two different colours. This shift light drawstring t-shirt is just beautiful. It's the crop design so it goes really well with the high-waisted leggings and it's adjustable at the front. It's soft and breathable and can be layered perfectly onto with your sports bra and it ranges from sizes extra small to two extra large. Since getting all this new active wear, I haven't looked back. I have basically lived in it. If you're wondering, I've put my sizes in the description as well, just for reference, if you're unsure. And there are also size guides on the website. As I've said before, I never work with brands that I don't genuinely love. Let me tell you, I do absolutely love this brand and everything that it's working towards and everything that it says and its whole story and its motto. Yvette is a professional women's sports brand aiming at providing high quality professional and fashionable sports apparel as well as meticulous customer service. So I'd just like to say thank you again to Yvette Sports for sponsoring this video and if you haven't already go and check out the discount codes that I've linked in the description box below to get money off your order. Now that's a bougie breakfast. It's unrealistic for you to expect your relationship with food and exercise to mend itself in one day, or one week, or one month even. Many of us have spent years of our lives in these unhealthy mindsets, but it's a habit that can be forgotten, as it's something we form artificially, influenced by things around us, rather than it being a biological urge to run X number of miles so you can eat dinner. The first, and arguably the biggest step, is to decide that you want to change. To realise that this current pattern of restriction and compensation isn't making you happy and that you're missing out on worlds of joy because of it. Personally, I found that surrounding myself with positive influences was a huge help. It's okay to put yourself first. Prioritising your mental well-being does not make you selfish. Focusing on your mental health makes you brave and strong. And sometimes distancing yourself from those people that make you feel bad about yourself is what you need to do. Protect yourself because you're worth protecting. My favourite recovery friendly YouTubers include Linda Sun, Elzani, Grackle and Ray Mitchell. Although these people aren't solely recovery accounts, their relationship with food and exercise is really inspiring to me. Oh, also time for a bit of self promo. If you didn't already know, I'm also on Instagram and TikTok where I'm active daily. My YouTube uploads are a bit all over the place at the moment, so if you want to know in advance when a new video is going to be up, be sure to check out my Instagram as I try and let everyone know a few days in advance. I'd like to talk about food and fueling your body properly. I'm sure by now you've all heard of the phrase food is fuel and other variations of it. And to some extent, that's true. It's a biological fact that your body needs food, 
And if you have moved your body more than you would normally, chances are you'll need to eat more than usual. But what I want you to also remember is that food is so much more than fuel. We aren't cars, we're people. Cars don't fill up with fuel because they enjoy the taste of it or because they love the social occasion of going to the petrol station and spending quality time with other cars. I decided I love cycling so much. But humans do, and that's amazing. It's amazing that we have this universal concept of eating food to bring people together. It's something that we all have in common. So what I'm trying to say is enjoy your food. Don't get too bogged down in trying to make sure you're fueling your body right by weighing and measuring and things like that because very quickly that can become disordered. I know it can be difficult, but try and listen to your body. And I'm not just talking about your physical hunger signals. I mean, if you really fancy a bagel with Biscoff for breakfast, go for it. Don't deny yourself of the foods that you're craving. Eating disorders are very sneaky things, and it's easy for little forms of restriction, even things as small as starting to measure your peanut butter again, to slip back in. Recovery is a conscious effort, even if you are in this place. Also, I'd like to clarify, when I use the term recovery, I'm referring to anyone who has ever struggled with some form of disordered eating or exercising and wants to change that. You don't need to have had an eating disorder to deserve recovery, and you don't need to have had anything diagnosed. And also, you don't need to have struggled for years and years. Everyone deserves recovery, at any age, at any weight, regardless of your experiences. There is no such thing as not being ill enough to deserve recovery. It's literally the biggest oxymoron I've ever heard. You wouldn't tell a cancer patient that they aren't ill enough to start chemo. You wouldn't wait for their tumour to become life-threatening before starting treatment. And the same should go for eating disorders. There isn't the same early intervention that we have for other illnesses. At the moment, our system seems to work by letting people become extremely, extremely near-death kind of ill before offering them any form of help. So please don't wait to get any worse. If you are aware that you have a problem with food, please make a change sooner rather than later. There is no rush to start your journey back into the world of exercise. In fact, I'd say it's better to wait longer than you need to than jump back into it too soon and risk triggering a relapse. And also, you don't ever have to get back into exercise. Like I said, I genuinely love moving my body and it was a big part of my life before my eating disorder. Things like kayaking and water skiing and walking and swimming are things I've done with my family for years. And dance, which is something I've done almost daily for over a decade, has given me an irreplaceable, lifelong group of friends. Whatever you decide, remember there is absolutely no rush and that your recovery should always, always come first. In case you didn't already know, recently I set up a little Etsy store selling recovery-based affirmation cards. I sell things like reminders and mirror signs and they're all really pretty, designed by me and in beautiful colours. I ship pretty much worldwide and if you want to check it out, I'll put the link for my shop in the description below. 10% of money made goes to the UK eating disorder charity Beat to hopefully give something back and help others who are experiencing the same thing as me. Newt, do you remember Pingu, Mum? Mm. Yeah, the penguin, and he's like, Newt! I'm gonna look it up. See? No, 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 no.
The past few weeks have brought me a lot of joy. I've tried so many new things and done things that really pushed me out of my comfort zone as well. I'm on a journey, but not a physical one, and it feels so much more rewarding than relying on the scale or the mirror for validation ever did. I went swimming all by myself. I cycled on the main roads. I filmed myself wearing tight revealing sportswear for potentially thousands of people to see. These achievements have made me feel so much prouder of myself than losing weight ever could. Although restriction may feel like a quick solution, long term is never the answer. And please don't let your brain try and convince you otherwise. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly hope it's given you a bit more of an insight into food and exercise and your relationship with them both. If there are any other videos you'd like to see, please do let me know in the comments below. I love you and I hope you're having an amazing day. It is not very nice and my feet are just puddles of water and it looks like there's another little rivery bit coming up and I am not having a bad time. <laughs> It's meant to be May. Like, what is happening with this weather? It's supposed to be my summer holiday. This is not a summer holiday. No.